I've got to yell so you can make out what I'm saying. This is necessary to go in there while it's smoking and all the dust. We'll just do this. All right, guys, so today's plan is we're going to clean. I got to switch the lighting. We're going to clean the uh, central boiler. It is cold. It's running right now, but uh, there's hardly any fuel left. So let's get in here and look. So there's how much I have left from last night when I loaded it. It's uh, about nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so we'll scrape all that out. We'll get all that creosote up out of there, clean the doors really well. Then we'll go in here, clean the air channels where the stepper motors are at. I can show you guys a little bit of that. But uh, yeah, let's get to cleaning. So step one, get a flat shovel. We're gonna leave that stuff up here. You're gonna hear the beeping because the bypass door's open, so just bear with me. I, I know it's pretty annoying, but nothing you're really gonna do about it. Uh, we're gonna clean this out. We need a metal container like that. Yeah, it's rotted. Oh well. We're gonna scrape or take out all this really fine ash. You want to make sure you have a metal container because this ash is still hot. Um, it'll take, you know, a day or so for this stuff to cool down. But what I like to do, especially right now, since there's snow on the ground, is I'll fill this up with the fine ash, and then I'll spread it on the garden. Just make sure, for those of you that want to spread it on the garden, you add the right amount of lime to neutralize this because this stuff is pretty acidic. So the reason that this thing is called the HD is because you can see the whole way through the end of the firebox from this end to the other end, where the heat exchanger's at. You want to be mindful there's a temperature probe right in the center of the firebox where it shoots down where the flame shoots down there's a temperature probe right there and uh, that's what gives you your reaction chamber temperature so you want to be mindful not to hit that so that's kind of why I get down on my hands and knees make sure make sure that you do not touch that thing stuff is very very fine I can't tell you how many wheelbarrow loads of wood turns into I don't know an eighth of a wheelbarrow of ash not even this stuff is like like I said in the past videos it's like talc powder now we'll move to the back of the furnace So you can see, here's your heat exchangers. They're vertical heat exchangers. And right there you can see through the front um, of the furnace. So last time I cleaned this furnace, I actually cleaned the heat exchangers pretty decent. Wire brush, uh, they're not that bad right now. I'll still scrape them off a little bit. 
So there's the inside of the reaction chamber. There's a baffle there. Um, you can see the temperature probe there on the right hand side that comes down that reads the temperature of the stuff coming in. I'm going to scrape the sides of the furnace, make sure everything's good, get all that junk out of there. Uh, that's what we're going to do now. scraper this thing's pretty nice helps get all all the crap out of the corners Close the back. Now I'll go dust the garden. out the fine ash, scrape the inside there. Now we're going to clean out the firebox. It's hot. I know a lot of folks don't do that. That's nice. I just spilled it all over the place. A lot of folks don't do this, but this is personal preference. This is how I've cleaned mine for the last decade. I started this when I did my E Classic 1400, and I've just continued. Key note in this whole thing uh, my E Classic, I would shut it down and completely clean it top to bottom every two to three weeks. If you didn't do that, you couldn't maintain airflow, and the fires would get smoky, and you just I mean, the furnace would run, but it just wouldn't run optimally. This, I can do this one month and a half, and it runs perfectly fine. I mean, as long as you do, you know, scrape it every night before you load it and do all that, it, it is shocking how much better this one will run versus the other one. All right, so as you can see, there's a little bit of creosote buildup along the backs. The air channels here are pretty clean, but the, uh, and the ones over here aren't bad either. Uh, we're gonna make sure that we can have good uh, airflow throughout the furnace. We're gonna scrape the sides, scrape some of this creosote, and then work on the uh, air holes in the front. All right, I've got to yell so you can make out what I'm saying. This is necessary to go in there while it's smoking and all the dust we'll just do this so this is necessary to go in there with all the dust and the smoke so what i'll go in and do now is take that tool that handmade tool and scrape the sides make sure that we can get all that creosote off the sides It's 
warm in there, just like the beach, only dusty and stinky. Bye. Smoky, smoky. All right, we got to go in one more time, do a scrape job on the sides, on the top. Uh, on the top, I can use this, and on the sides. See, this is a creosote that I'm talking about. It's like tar. Mold it. And when it does burn, man, does it smoke. More of the same tar. Last time to go in. There's a steamer. All right, I'm done on the inside. This is everything uh, cleaned out pretty decent. At the end of the year, I'll, I'll uh, clean this out so it's spotless, but uh, we'll hit that in another video. So remove the uh, air charge tube from the middle while I clean out where uh, the other air holes are. All right, so now we're going to uh, work on these air uh, solenoids, stepper motors, whatever you want to call them. So. Right here is a pretty good schematic of it. So you've got the blower motor that forces air in here. And you've got a, I think this is the primary and this is the secondary. I'll be able to tell you here in a second. Uh, you've got two, um, basically there's a stepper motor on top right there and it lifts the chain, I'll show you. All right, I always keep a screwdriver in here. So you've got one and two. And when the furnace calls for heat, uh, the primary, which I believe to be this one, opens up, uh, and it's by percentage. So it starts off, I think, maybe 60% and then goes to 30%. And then this one goes from 0 to 45 once uh, the fire's uh, roll, rolling good enough. So what I'll do is I'll take them off. Um, they're held on by a hose clamp. Take, off, take them off, make sure there's no obstructions in there. If there's any kind of creosote, I'll clean See, it was just basically making sure that the stepper motors were working, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll take them off and make sure everything's clean. Come on, get it. There we go. As you'll see, there's a little bit of, little bit of uh, grease or whatever you want to call it, creosote build up in there. Normally what I do, so I take my screwdriver, and I scrape this stuff, make sure it all gets out. Not that much in there, it was more water than anything, so we'll that out and we'll reattach it everything in there looks good I can see right in the firebox so there's there's good airflow there <clears throat> okay good to go 
good and tight. So this one's pretty dry. There's nothing in there. So that's a good thing. Um, and this one goes right into the air charge tube. That's excellent. So on my old furnace on the 1400, um, when it began to leak, it began to leak here, um, but it was on the back side of the furnace and uh, on the older style E-Classic 1400s, uh, it forced air into, it didn't have a primary air charge or a, a charge tube like this one. Um, it forced it into the refra refractory as the uh, material started to burn down. And my leak happened right where this uh, metal tube met the water jacket and it became weak there. Uh, and that's what, how I ended up getting this furnace through the warranty claim. Putting this back on now. Word to the wise, I was scraping the top here and central boiler, this must be a new thing that they do. They put a rubber piece of plastic over top of the cotter pin, probably to help with um, corrosion of that cotter pin. And of course, I plucked it off. And I tried to get it back on and I, I, it looks like it's partially melted and I don't know, you can kind of see it here. If you're scraping around over there, be careful. That cotter pin was clean. You could tell it wasn't corroded at all. And I scraped it. So now I'll probably have to order a new one, replace it. These are clean. We know we've maintained good airflow into the furnace. So I'll close that now. Put the cover back on it. Okay. We're done here. I'm gonna grab the primary charge tube, primary air, or secondary air charge tube, whatever you wanna call it. The hickamabob or thingamajigger, just to show you. So this is what it looks like. So it sits in the furnace like this, and it forces air out of these holes to get a more complete combustion. When you clean the furnace, you wanna clean it, make sure that there's no obstructions, everything's good. You can see right down in there. A um, Little bit of stuff on the sides. You can scrape that. You just gotta be mindful that this thing sits in the middle of the furnace so until it cools down, it's very, very hot. Very hot. All right, so that is how I do my monthly cleaning. Everything's good. And now we'll fire it back up. So for the refire, what I have here is newspaper and bark. Hit ignition air. All right, so right now, uh, what I did was uh, I hit the ignition air, had that paper in there with the bark. She's smoking a little bit right now, and that's to be expected until it gets up to temperature. So, what I'll do now is I'll fill up the wheelbarrow. Uh, full of wood and uh, get ready to load it. Right now we're at uh, 171 on uh, water temp and 616 on reaction chamber temperature. You can get 24 hour burns out of this thing but the uh, creosote build up on the sides especially if your wood's not seasoned is, is pretty terrible i uh loaded the furnace filled the furnace and uh for an eight hour burn 
and yeah she's humming along great right now not an ounce of smoke right now I'm at 182 degree water and 1013 on reaction chamber so hey guys thanks for following along don't forget if you like what you see follow us on rock acres farmstead's facebook page instagram page and tiktok for more content more video more everything thanks for tuning in guys we'll see ya